Please open to page 222 in your student journal. In last unit, we started section 7-4, and we started by solving the equations in factored form. The equations that you see on page 222, we already solved some of those in the first 7.4 video. And when we started those, they all start in what we call factored form. Now our next task is, how do we actually get the equations into factored form to solve them? So let's go ahead and turn to page 223. And let's start exploring how we can take an equation and get it into factored form. Let's start first of all by focusing on the factoring part. What we're going to be looking at this unit is how we factor a polynomial. So how do we get it into the factored form that we saw in the first part of 7-4? The first type of factoring we're going to look at is called factoring by removing the greatest common factor. And what I like to do from here on out, I like to abbreviate greatest common factor, GCF. Greatest common factor is something you refreshed on in one of those review assignments in the last unit. Greatest common factor is the biggest number that goes into the other numbers. So for example, if we look at number 13, the two numbers we're looking at are 6 and 3. We have to think about what is the biggest number that goes into 6 and 3. The biggest number that can go into 6 and 3 is 3. Now, when we look at the variable piece, finding a greatest common factor for variables, that's definitely new for us. So if I look at the variable piece, I have an x squared and I have an x. So x squared, remember, is x times x, and we have just a plain old x. So what they have in common is just x. They both have at least an x. After you find the greatest common factor, then we have to remove it, a.k.a. we're going to divide by it. So I'm going to divide each term by our greatest common factor. 6 divided by 3 is 2. x squared divided by x. If we remember our exponent properties from chapter 6, when we're dividing, if we have the same base, we subtract the exponents. My top exponent is a 2. My bottom exponent is really a 1. So I do 2 minus 1, I get x to the first. You don't have to write the 1 there, it's typically not written there. But you might want it just in case you need a refresher of how we got it. 3 divided by 3 is 1. x divided by x, that's also 1. So that last term, I know a lot of times people see it and they say, Oh, Miss Golly, those just cancel. They don't cancel. They simplify to a 1, and yes, you do need the 1 there. Whatever you divide it by for your greatest common factor, we write that out front. So what you now have is what we called factored form at the start of section 7-4 in our last unit. The difference is right now, we don't have an equal sign. This is not equal to zero. We don't need to solve it. At this point, we have factored form. What you have to double check, though, before you decide you're finished, double check and make sure the numbers you have left in the parentheses, that there's nothing else that can go into them. So I have a 2 and a 1. Only one can go into both. And then my first term has an x, my second term doesn't. So I know that I did take out the greatest common factor. 
one thing you can do to double check, and this is just a check, you can redistribute. So we get 6x squared plus 3x. If I redistribute, I should get the exact thing that I started with. But again, that is a check. The factored form, what I have in the purple box, would be your final answer. Let's try the same thing with number 14. Let's pick out our greatest common factor. Let's start with the numbers. I have a 4 and I have a 20. The biggest number that goes into 4 and 20 is 4. I have a y to the 4th and I have a y to the 3rd. So this one has 4 y's multiplied together. This one has 3. So if I look, they both have at least 3 y's being multiplied together. I need to have what they share. So how many do they have in common? They both have at least 3. After I have my greatest common factor, I need to divide all my terms by that common factor. 4 divided by 4 is 1. y to the 4th divided by y to the 3rd. I subtract my exponents. I get y to the 1st. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 3 minus 3, I get y to the 0 which we know is just 1. Whatever I divided by, my greatest common factor, I write in front of the parentheses. That would be my factored form. That would be my final answer. Remember, double check to make sure you got the greatest common factor. Look at the numbers in the parentheses. I have a 1 and I have a 5. The only number that can go into both 1 and 5 is just 1. My first term has a y, and my second term does not, so they no longer have a y in common. That is factored form. That's my final answer. If you want to distribute, to check, you would get 4y to the 4th minus 20y to the 3rd. That should match exactly what I started with. Again, my final answer, though, is the factored form that I have in the box. What I would like you to do is pause here and try question number 17. In question 17, I'm going to start by finding my greatest common factor. I have a 24 and I have an 8. The biggest number that can go into both of those is 8. I have H's, three H's multiplied together. The first one, just one H in the second term. So they only have one H in common. Divide by my greatest common factor. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. 8 divided by 8 is 1. H divided by H is also 1. So again, H divided by 8H divided by 8H, it's 1. My greatest common factor I write out front, and I have my factored form. The last one of these I want to look at before we get to the equation piece is number 16. If I start by picking out my greatest common factor, we might get stuck on the number piece. We have a 7 and we have a 2. The only number that goes into both 7 and 2 is going to be 1. And that's okay to have a greatest common factor of 1. Sometimes that happens. I have a z to the 7th and a z to the 6th. So 7 z's, 6 z's, they both have at least 6 z's. 
divide by that common factor. 1 divided by 7 is 7. 7 minus 6, we get z to the first. 2 divided by 1 is 2. z to the sixth divided by z to the sixth. I get z to the zero, which is just 1. Whatever I divided by, which is my greatest common factor, I rewrite that up front. Now, if you're struggling with finding the greatest common factor of the numbers, you may, if you want to, you may use a multiplication table. I will also allow you to use a multiplication table on the test as well. Usually the part that students will struggle with on this is trying to figure out what do I do, how do I know the exponent for my variable in my greatest common factor. So when you're trying to find the greatest common factor for the variable, use the smallest exponent. So when we had x to the second and x to the first in number 13, we used x to the first. When we had y to the fourth and y to the third in number 14, we used y to the third. In number 16, we had z to the seventh and z to the sixth, we used z to the sixth. So we always chose the smaller exponent. Now, as we take a look at number 16, or excuse me, number 19, the only difference between what we did in the four examples above and this one is now we have the equal sign. We have it equal to zero. Now we have to actually solve the equation. So now we need to put together what we did today with what we did at the beginning of this section. We start by finding our greatest common factor. Six, and there's really a one here. So the number that can go into both would be 1. I have a k squared and a k to the first. I use my smaller exponent, so I use k to the first. Divide by that greatest common factor. 6 divided by 1 is 6. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. k divided by k is also 1. And then I write my greatest common factor out front. And now it's equal to 0. Now we have the setup that we started with last time we covered section 7.4. So this is where we set each piece equal to 0, and then we solve. So in this one, k equals 1. Subtract 1, divide by 6, we have k equals negative 1 6. And you can just leave that right as a fraction, that's okay. So now the new part for us is before we can solve our equation, we have to first factor by removing the greatest common factor. So just take a minute and try out for me number 21. In number 21, you want to start by finding your greatest common factor. 4 and 52, 4 can go into both of those. I have a z to the second and a z to the first. I use the smaller exponent, so I use z to the first. Divide by that greatest common factor. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 2 minus 1 gets z to the first. 52 divided by 4 is 13. z divided by z is 1. I rewrite my greatest common factor in front, and my equation equals 0. Now from here, I do have to continue on, and I do have to now solve like we did at the end of our last unit. z equals 0, or 
z equals negative 13. Now what you do have to watch out for sometimes, something like we see in question 22, actually 23 and 24, if your equation is not equal to zero to start, you have to get it equal to zero before you factor and then before you solve. So in order to get my equation to equal zero, I'm going to add 72x to both sides. Now I have 6x squared plus 72x. Now that's going to equal 0. So from here what I'd like you to do is pause and try to now solve number 22. Start by finding your greatest common factor. 6 and 72, 6 can go into both. x squared and x to the first. I use the smaller exponent, so x to the first. Divide by my common factor. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 2 minus 1, I get x to the first. 72 divided by 6 is 12. x divided by x is just 1. So 6x equals 0 x plus 12 equals 0, x equals 0, or x equals negative 12. So make sure before you factor The equation needs to equal zero. So just keep that in mind as you're solving. Once your equation equals zero, find your greatest common factor. Remove that greatest common factor by dividing. And then find what x will equal to make your equation equal zero. This time I'd like you to try out your progress check. Use all the notes you'd like from your student journal. Check it. Check it in with me when you're finished.